I'd bootstrapped my product to being for sale on shelves in over 100 retail stores. My product was a miniature lighting device that could illuminate any surface it was attached to. The stores that carried my product consisted of a mix of Ace Hardware, Fred Meyer, which is a Walmart-like uh, big box chain, and then Dwayne Reed Pharmacies, which are now owned by Walgreens. But I needed to boost sales per store and scale up the number of stores too. So like many inexperienced entrepreneurs, I convinced myself that all I needed was more money so I could expand my product line and launch a big marketing campaign. But this required more money than I could fund myself or that my wife would allow me to fund ourselves. So I decided to raise outside capital. I mean, how hard could it be, I thought, especially since my product was already on the market. I just needed what I thought was a low-risk investment to scale up my business. But like anything new, I soon learned this was a lot harder than I thought it would be. Ever done that before? I'm going to guess probably so. Seeking outside funding consumed all of my focus since I was still a one-person operation. Also, I'm a really introverted person, which I may not be able to tell through my YouTube videos, but I am. And so this level of networking was really exhausting for me. I connected with everyone I could on LinkedIn, hoping I would find an angel investor. But I soon learned the cold, hard truth. Rich people don't give away money to random people on the internet. Shocking, I know. You almost always need a personal connection to them first. So... Next, I decided to pitch my product to a local angel investors group. And angel investors are just rich people who invest in early stage startups, and they tend to have groups in most large cities. For me, that was Honolulu because at the time we were living in Hawaii. The pitch event was held in a beautiful setting next to the ocean, but I was way too nervous to enjoy it. This was the first time I'd ever pitched my product or anything really to a room full of people. I'd presented at lots of meetings as a chip designer at TI, but nothing like this. Engineers never intimidate me since I feel at home with them, but this room full of rich investors scared the hell out of me. Honestly, I just wanted it to be over. I was so nervous and sweaty as I looked out at that room full of Aloha shirts with the people in them judging me and my product. I hated doing this type of thing so much, but I was determined to do anything I had to to succeed. The presentation itself is, well, it's mostly a blur, and just like my presentation that I had done earlier to Blockbuster Video Executives, after it was over, honestly, I don't really remember much of what I had said. Ultimately, the angel investors at this group were impressed that I had made it so far with my product, but they weren't interested because I wasn't yet profitable. So my total investment equals zero. My time wasted was way too much. It was a big fat failure and I felt so stuck. But soon after, a sales rep who was pitching my product to retailers told me that he was friends with the granddaughter of the founder of rice Hmm, okay, that's interesting, but I wondered what, what was his point? Then he tells me that he's been talking with her about my product and the progress that I've made. Apparently, she was impressed. Okay, now I'm really interested, I thought. More accurately, I became a little obsessed with rice Aroni, thinking this random woman would be the savior I needed for my startup. Although I hadn't eaten rice Aroni since I was a kid, I quickly went and bought a couple boxes and even read about how her grandfather founded the company many years ago. But I shouldn't have been at all focused on rice aroni or even pitching to angel investor groups. Because fundraising is a full-time job and it completely distracts you from running and improving your business. I spent about nine months focused on trying to convince investors to give me money. Ultimately, all I got from rice aroni was a couple boxes of rice and the heir to the fortune never opened up her wallet. She felt that I needed an investor with knowledge in my particular market, which she didn't have. Turns out most investors want to be involved with the startup and ideally to be able to use their expertise and their connections to give the startup a boost. Honestly, I really needed both money and knowledge, but I didn't know what I didn't know, so I focused on the money. Around this time, I then befriended a local entrepreneur in Honolulu 
who had lots of connections with angel investors in Hawaii. He was impressed, and eventually he introduced me to a well-known angel investor in Honolulu. After I met with this angel investor, he said that he was interested in investing. I was ecstatic. Okay, well, at least briefly I was. As our discussion progressed, I came to these realizations. Number one, he wanted more than I wanted to give. Number two, I'd been ignoring my business for far too long. Number three, I didn't need big funding. I just needed to lower my expectations. And then my fourth realization was money, especially from other people, entices you to take dangerous shortcuts. After wasting nearly a year of my time trying to raise funding, I decided this was not the right path for me. I still needed to figure out a lot of things, especially my market messaging, and really, it's best to get money after you figure everything out. When your business still has lots of unknowns, it's best to keep your budget low and to keep testing until you figure out what really works. When developing and launching a new product, there are always so many unknowns. The problem that everyone faces the first time is you don't know what you don't know. How can you unless you've done it before? And this is really why I ended up creating the Hardware Academy, which is the place for innovators who are developing and launching a new electronic product to get guidance and training from those that have done it before. And it's where product innovators like yourself come together to help and learn from each other. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to watch this video next.